So, so far, even though these things uh, look uh, maybe interesting or a little familiar, we have not yet stated clearly how they apply to physics. We've been talking about vector spaces V for a particle, then V tensor N, and we've looked at states there, we've looked at permutation operators there, symmetric states there, anti-symmetric states there. What is missing is uh, something that connects it to quantum mechanics, and that is given by the so-called symmetrization, symmetrization, postulate. So it's a postulate. It's something that um, you technically can't derive. Therefore, you postulate. You can say it's an extra axiom, even, in quantum mechanics. Uh, you would say also that probably there's no other way to do things. So in some sense, it's forced. But uh, I think it's more honest to admit it's an extra postulate. So here it goes. I'll read it first, then I'll write it. So it says the following. If you have a system of n identical particles, arbitrary states in V tensor n are not physical states. The physical states are the states that are totally symmetric, in that case, the particles are called bosons, or totally anti-symmetric, in which case the particles are called fermions. That's basically it. The arbitrary state that is neither symmetric nor anti-symmetric and all that is not a physical state of a system of identical particles. So let's state it here. In a system, system with n identical particles, physical states are not arbitrary states in V tensor n. Rather, they are totally symmetric in parentheses. They belong to sim uh, n of v, in which case the particles are said to be bosons, be bosons, or they are totally anti-symmetric, are totally anti-symmetric, They belong to anti NV, in which case they are said to be fermions. All right, so. This is really pretty fundamental. It's, it's a statement that we began our discussion by saying uh, we have an electron that is up and an, another electron that is down. Is it the plus minus state or is it the minus plus state? And we said it's neither one. It's, uh, um, you cannot declare those two to be equivalent, and that's what this says. It's not arbitrary states on this, but they have to become totally symmetric if they're bosons or totally anti-symmetric if there are fermions. So we have to make a few comments. Uh, 
And that's what will keep us busy for the next 20, 25 minutes. Uh, and uh, to understand this and see what uh, it implies and how we use it. So, so here it is. The statement we have made is a statement of fact in three dimensions. There's no for particles that we like and we study. There are possi further possibilities in worlds uh, of lower dimension, two, three dimensions uh, space-time or so, two-dimensional space that allows for further kinds of statistics that are interesting. But this is the general statement. Uh, so the first comment is this is the general statement, but further statistics, other types of states, exist in two dimensions, not in three where we live. Um, you know, we say three in the Galilean way, it's three plus one time, but uh, this is spatial dimensions. Uh, this is the statistical uh, definition of bosons and fermions. But then comes the spin statistics theorem. theorem that applies, uh, that you understand with quantum mechanics, and that's a deep theorem that ends up telling you that uh, particles with spin 0, 1, 2, uh, integer are bosons and particles with spin one half, three halves are up are fermions. So this is a great achievement of quantum field theory associating this, uh, the statistical properties with the spin. It's a deep connection. Um, it's valid for elementary particles or composite particles. Uh, you know, the list of particles is not that big. Uh, particles of spin one, we know a, a lot of them. A photon is spin one. Gluons are spin one. Ws, the Cs, are spin one particles. Particle spin zero, we didn't know an elementary one for a while. We finally know the Higgs is there, spin zero. Uh, particles of spin two, just the graviton alone. Higher spin, not known, uh, may exist. String theory has them. Um, all kinds of theories postulate them. They may exist, they may not. Uh, Spin, uh, half fractional spin, well, all the matter particles, quarks, muons, leptons, neutrinos are spin one half. Spin three half is hypothetical as an elementary particle. If it exists, it would be called the gravitino. Uh, they're composite particles. Uh, you could bake with quarks or with other particles, mesons, baryons. Uh, you can get several spins, uh, not with elementary particles, many times uh, unstable particles. So anyway, those, is, those are very interesting things. Now, next fact uh, is that um, you can go from elementary particles to um, composite particles. So if you have... For example, the hydrogen atom, that it has a proton and an electron. 
And you want to figure out if it's a boson or a fermion. Um, well, you think of another hydrogen atom here, P and E, and you write a wave function that involves the, the protons, the first proton, the second proton, the first electron, and the second electron. That's a little bit of a funny notation. This would correspond to maybe the coordinates of the first proton, the second proton, the first electron, the second electron. Since protons are identical particles that are fermions, the wave function must change sign if P1 and P2 are exchanged. There would be a minus sign. It's anti-symmetric. Since the electrodes are fermions, it should be antisymmetric by exchanging these two. So it's also antisymmetric under this exchange. So finally, if you exchange this atom with this atom, you must exchange the two protons and the two electrons at the same time, two minuses, and you get a plus. Therefore, the hydrogen atom is a boson. So, uh, this statistical property is built up, so an object built with uh, a number of bosons or a number of fermions will be um, a boson or a fermion, depending on those numbers. So that's a nice thing. So the hydrogen atom, atom is a boson. 